Hello everyone, my name is Mark Vale, and you may know me from my Skype for Business blog, www.skype4b.uk, and that's the number 4, not FOR, or as presenter on the Skype show, the monthly community Skype for Business webinar at www.skypeshow.com. For those of you who don't, who don't follow me, you'll know that product reviews isn't something that I, that I do very often, or, or if, if not at all. However, I wanted to make sure make a short review of the Majorly HDMI to USB capture device. And why is that? Well, in Skype, in, our, in the Skype show, the broadcasts we, uh, we sometimes like to perform live demonstrations, and due to the lack of co connectivity or screen sharing in broadcast meetings, we needed a device to work around that limitation. After reading reviews by MVPs Matt Landis, who has a blog at windowspbx.blogspot.com, and Tom Morgan at www.thoughtstuff.co.uk. Check them out yourselves. Um, I'll provide the links after this video. I decided to contact Majorl directly, and they very kindly provided us with a capture device in order to improve our show content. In the future uh, of the Skype show, I hope to provide this functionality to guests too. So what does a capture device allow us to do? It essentially allows us to capture a HDMI source and convert that into a USB video source that can be interpreted by a computer as a video web camera. This allows us to use the video streaming capabilities within Skype for Business as a type of desktop share function. The biggest benefit of this is that we're not limited by the RDP protocol by, used by traditional um, screen sharing within Skype for Business that produces poor frame rate as we are using the video functionality that and that we can deliver 1080p at 60 frames a second demonstrations. The device is simple to use, it's true, to, true plug and play using the standard Microsoft USB video and USB audio.sys drivers. This means zero install and instant use. The device works well on Windows 7 through to Windows 10 devices and also using the Link 2013 and Skype for Business clients. Some key observations when using the device I found is that there is an older, older sibling with a black plastic housing after reading some reviews online, it seemed to be that heat was a problem that was causing a short lifespan. So we may as well have addressed this by changing the, um, the housing to a metal casing and also coating the inside with a special material that aids quicker heat exchange from the components to the casing. The downside of this is that the case can seem quite warm to the end users, but this is by design and it's nothing to worry about. It's just the exhaust mechanism to make the heat exchange more uh, efficiently and to increase the life of of the components according to Majorel. The USB cable provided is USB 3.0, but the device itself is USB 2 backwards compatible. During testing I found that if you use the ch a cheap USB cable instead of the one provided, there are, then you will experience audio and video quality issues. The same if you connect the USB 3 cable to a USB port, it seems that the USB 2 bus can't keep up with the throughput required. Therefore, I highly recommend you use the USB 3 cable provided by Majorel. When capturing the device, uh, when capturing video, the capture's quality is, is very good. Majorel market this as being full HD capable. However, there is some quality draw from when using Skype for Business meetings, but this is a limitation of Skype for Business and not the device itself. If you use a camera app on Windows 10, the capture is full 1080p at 60 frames a second. A capture device can be used with any HDMI source that allows you to capture the stream legally, of course. And we'll be looking at a couple of different sources, sources later. When comparing this de device with software alternatives, the capture device easily outperforms them consistently. W one negative of this device is the price point for sale in the UK. It's around £260 which makes it a premium purchase and therefore limiting opportunity to those who absolutely need this device in order to do their, perform their meetings. I've been exploring the device's capabilities with Skype for Business and to see how I can enrich the experience that's not, not only within broadcast meetings but also native Skype for Business meetings. In broadcast meetings, the goal is simple. I want to be able to show my desktop in a meeting. This device allows me to do that with relative ease. The other use case that is far more interesting is the, cap is the capabilities this device can bring to normal Skype meetings. I've read numerous forum posts complaining about 
trying to screen share a video um, or try and play a video embedded in a PowerPoint within a Skype business meeting. Complaints include no sound, slow frame rate and audio disconnect because they're being sent to other sources for meeting content. In education this is especially frustrating as a tutor trying to deliver a session whereby they have to play a video clip or an episode of a recorded documentary etc. Cannot ask students to go away and watch it on YouTube and then come back to the meeting when they finish watching it well because well students are students aren't they. Similarly attaching the 800 megabyte video file to the conference and asking 100 students to download it well that's enough to make any Skype for Business cons consultants work. So my goal here is to see if I can use this device in order to de deliver a meeting, a video to a meeting with full sound and at a decent frame rate. So there's a number of scenarios and configurations that I've come up with. So my first attempt was to use a single laptop connected to the H yeah, connected the HDMI output of the, of the laptop to the capture device and then connected the USB cable back to the same laptop creating a, in a sense in a loop. This gave me the ability to show show my screen to participants as my video. However, I was unable to produce any sound. Another frustration is, is down to, to Skype, and is if, if I was del delivering narration, including a webcam, I would need to go into the Skype for Business client and change the video device source to the capture device, and then restart my video. As you cannot hot swap video video source within your meeting. This ensured that there was a 30 second or so pause to the conference while I sorted myself out. Sound wasn't able to be picked up due to limitations of the sound card on the device I have, and I tested this on another two devices that showed the same results, so it must be a harder limitation. So this configuration with a single laptop then is useful for desktop sharing and broadcast meetings, or showing a video but the presenter narrating the video as it plays. Introducing a second laptop into the conference dedicated to capture of the desktop and proved, proved a little better. Using one laptop dedicated for my video and audio and another to the demo I wanted to make allowed me to switch between video spotlights in order to make the conference flow a bit more smoothly. A tip here is to lock the demo laptop in the meeting spotlight so you get the full screen. Again, I was unable to get any sound. Really, I, I was. I managed it in two ways, but neither neither were very useful. One was to use ManyCam and add this assist, add the system sound to the ManyCam microphone source on the lap on the demo laptop, and then um, this produced a very poor random audio quality. The second was to connect the USB cable directly to my presenting laptop, but then I needed to change my my pre presenting laptop video source as well as well as my audio settings in the SFB client to read and rejoin the conference. And this produced slightly better audio, but by the time it took this to, took me to set this up, it was too long to be acceptable. Therefore, the optimal configuration that, that worked was including another laptop in the mix. This time one would be dedicated to the demonstration and not joined to the meeting. The other would be used as what I call a proxy laptop that will be joined to the Skype meeting and this would have its video and audio sources pre-configured to the capture device and then and a presenter laptop to dedicated just to presenting. This allowed seamless transition between presenter and demo with full video and sound capabilities. I warn you now that sound can range in quality from stereo to mono but this is down down to the way Skype works works its audio to try and keep it going in the meeting. So this will be so the audio will be affected by connectivity and bandwidth, but it's better than what we have, what we have originally. Demo laptop. Um, when configuring that, you must um, you must select the capture device as a default playback device on the sound settings. Um, if you don't do this, then you will um, you won't get the sound through the capture device. But also, you must disable all of the playback devices to, to ensure that you don't get any feedback loops. On the proxy laptop, set the audio P audio device and PC mic to PC microphone speakers and then select the major will capture USB audio and then change the video source to the major will HDMI video source. When joining the meeting from your presenting machine, Invite the proxy laptop into the meeting and start the video on the proxy laptop 
and you should see the demo laptop screen showing the thumbnail. Mute all microphones except the one that you are using on your presenting laptop to avoid feedback. When ready, lock the proxy laptop video into the spotlight, unmute the proxy laptop microphone, mute your presenter microphone and demo the video directly from a dedicated demo laptop. And this will give you uh, full playback and sound. Obviously there's a lot of kit here to configure for a novice user and therefore can be a bit tricky. However, you can set the proxy laptop and the demo laptop in IT and allow a presenter to request a system in their meeting. And that in this case, all they would need to do is invite the proxy laptop into the meeting and then be provided with console access to the demo laptop from the presenting machine using something like TeamViewer or other direct console support and software. Although it's not a clean way of doing this, it's a workaround to the limitations of the Skype for Business meetings and clients at this moment in time. So now, before I demo the capture device, so that we've got something to compare to, I wanted to show you what it looks like playing a YouTube video using traditional desktop sharing. So here we have a video uh, on YouTube of one of the bands that I, I follow. And if we press play now, we can see that we don't get any audio and the playback is very, very, the frame rate is very slow to the point where it's unusable. If I now stop sharing and start my video on my proxy laptop, So there we have it. Okay, the audio is a bit pants, um, and that's down to my setup at the moment. I've got uh, don't have enough Cat5 cables, so I'm running off wireless over um, a really stupid home network link. Um, but I have had this running in um, for about an hour on a local uh, in my lab on a local LAN um, flawlessly well without any audio quality issues so it's down to the fact that um, I'm using really poor connectivity at the minute for this so now that we've done that let's see what else um, we can capture through through this device so if we go and try and capture um, a TV source for instance so we'll just see what happens with that this is streaming from my UView box um, and this is Jeremy Kyle so we'll see how this the audio goes on this let's just unmute it now it's what you say babe why wouldn't you just walk away I don't want nothing to do with him then why are you here because of what she said about my kids this concludes my review and video of the of the major role HDMI to USB capture device and how we can use it to enrich Skype for business meetings. I hope you enjoyed it.